Let's get started with our linear algebra review. In this video, I want to tell you what are matrices and what are vectors. A matrix is a rectangular array of numbers written between square brackets. So for example, here is a matrix. I'm going to write a left square bracket and then write in a bunch of numbers. And, you know, these could be uh, features for a machine learning problem, or it could be data from somewhere else. But, for example, the specific values don't matter. And then I'm going to close it with another right bracket on the right. And so that's one matrix. And, you know, here's another example of a matrix. I'm just going to write 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So a matrix is just another way of saying is a 2D or a two-dimensional array. And... Um, the other piece of terminology we need is that the dimension of a matrix is going to be uh, written as the number of rows times the number of columns in the matrix. So concretely, this example on the left, this has one, two, three, four rows, and it has two columns. And so this example on the left, I'm going to say this is a four by two matrix, okay? Because it's number of rows by number of columns, so four rows, two columns. This one on the right, this matrix has two rows, so that's the first row, that's the second row, and it has three columns, right? With, that's the first column, that's the second column, that's the third column. So this second matrix, we say it is a two by three matrix, or we say that the dimension of this matrix is two by three, and Sometimes you also see this written out as, uh, in the case of the left, you see this written out as R4 by 2. Or concretely, what people will sometimes say is that this matrix is an element of the set R4 by 2. So this, this thing here, this just means a set of all matrices that are of dimension 4 by 2. And this thing on the right, sometimes this is written out as a matrix that's an R2 by 3. So if, if you ever see, oh, excuse me, 2 by 3. So if you ever see something like this, you know, R4 by 2 or R2 by 3, people are just referring to matrices of a specific dimension. Next, let's talk about how to refer to specific elements of the matrix. And by matrix elements, elements of the matrix, I just mean the entries or the numbers inside the matrix. So in the standard notation, if A is this matrix here, then A subscript IJ is going to refer to the I comma J entry meaning the entry in the matrix is in the i-th row and the j-th column. So for example, A11 is going to refer to the entry in the first row and the first column. So that's the first row and the first column. And so, you know, A11 is going to be equal to 1402. Another example, A12 is going to refer to the entry in the first row and the second column. And so A12 is going to be equal to 191. Just a couple more quick examples. Let's see. A, oh, let's say A32 is going to refer to the entry in the third row and the second column, right? Because that's 32. So that's equal to 1437. And finally, A41 is going to refer to you know, this one, right? Fourth row, first column is equal to 147. And if, hopefully you won't, but if you were to write, say, what is A43? Well, that refers to the fourth row and the third column, but, you know, this matrix has no third column, so this is undefined, you know, or you can think of this as an error. So there's, there's no such element as a A43, so, you know, shouldn't be referring to A43. So the matrix gives you a way of letting you quickly organize, index, and access lots of data. And in case I seem to be tossing up a lot of concepts, a lot of new notation very rapidly, you don't need to memorize all this, but on the course website where we have posted the lecture notes, we also have all of these definitions written down. So you can always refer back, you know, either to these slides posted on the course website or to the lecture notes if you forget, like, well, a41 is that, which row, which column is that. Don't worry about memorizing everything now. You can always refer back to the written materials on the course website. Use that as a reference. So that's what the matrix is. Next, let's talk about what is a vector. 
A vector turns out to be a special case of a matrix. A vector is a matrix that has only one column. So if you have an n by one matrix, then that's a, remember, right, n is the number of rows, and one here is the number of columns. So, so a matrix with just one column is what we call a vector. So here's an example of a vector, right, with, uh, I guess I have n equals four elements here. So we also call this thing, Another term for this is that this is a four-dimensional vector. It just means that this is a vector with four elements, with four numbers in it. And just as you know, earlier for matrices, you saw this notation like R3 by 2 to refer to 3 by 2 matrices, right? For this vector, we're going to refer this to, to this as a vector in the set R4. So this R4, again, just means a set of all four-dimensional vectors. Next, let's talk about how to refer to elements of the vector. We're going to use the notation yi to refer to the i-th element of the vector y. So if y is this vector, y subscript i is the i-th element. So y1 is the first element, is equal to 460. You know, y2 is equal to uh, the second element, right? 232 is the first, is the second. y3 is equal to 315 and so on, and only y1 through y4 are defined because this is a four-dimensional vector. Also, it turns out that there are actually two conventions for how to index into a vector, and here they are. Sometimes people will use one index and sometimes zero index vectors. So this example on the left is a one index vector where the elements we write as y1, y2, y3, y4, and this example on the right is an example of a zero index vector where we start the indexing of the elements from zero. So the elements go from you know, y0 up to y3, and this is a little bit like the arrays of some programming languages, right? where the arrays can either be indexed starting from 1, so the first element of an array is sometimes say y1, if there's a kind of sequence of notation, I guess, and sometimes, you know, it's, it's zero, zero index, depending on what programming language you use. So it turns out that in most of math, the one index version is more common. But for a lot of machine learning applications, zero index uh, vectors gives us a more convenient notation. So what you should usually do is, uh, unless otherwise specified, you should assume that we're using one index vectors. In fact, throughout the rest of these videos on linear algebra review, I will be using one index vectors. But uh, just be aware that when we talk about machine learning applications, sometimes you know I'll explicitly say when we need to switch to when we need to use zero index vectors as well. Finally, by convention, usually when writing matrices and vectors, most people will use uppercase to refer to matrices. So when we use capital matrices, capital letters like A, B, C, you know, X to refer to matrices, and usually we'll use lowercase like A, B, X, Y to refer to either numbers, or just real numbers or scalars, or to vectors. But this isn't always true, but this is the more common notation where we use you know, lowercase y to refer to vector, and we we'll usually use uppercase to refer to a matrix. So you now know what are matrices and vectors. Next, we'll talk about some of the things you can do with them.